Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to this uh, alcohol infused uh, update about how much I earned from uh, stock music this year 2021 and uh, I apologize for the uh, shelf behind me here. I'm going to clean that up and make it uh, YouTube worthy with some flowers and uh, RGB lights and things like that. So, but anyway, with that said, it's time for an earnings update on how much I have earned from stock music in one year since I started out doing this, not counting 2014 when I tried it and just quit doing it from 2021. That's the year we are starting from. I'm going to show you the libraries I have my music on and how much each library has paid me this year. Remember, I also have a full time day job and a family, three kids, wife, everything. I'm not doing stock music full time. Just just have that in mind when I am going through these earnings. So currently I have about in a total of 60, 66 finished tracks. If you count in shorter edits such as 30 seconds and 60 seconds edits, that's about 250 individual files that's online on different libraries. Most of the tracks, they were not <coughs> originally made for stock music libraries, but I have rearranged almost all of them so they would fit more in uh, the stock uh, music template, if you will. And just stock music template is, uh, well, we can talk uh, quite a lot about that, but it's a short intro. It's a uh, <coughs> middle part and a short outro, but that's just very, very, very high level. Before I dive into the earnings, I can tell you that you probably won't be that impressed, but uh, stick to the end of this video where I explain my thoughts on why the earnings looks like they do and what I am doing moving forward and what you can do to maybe try and uh, increase your earnings or try to get the ball rolling on stock uh, music. So without further ado, I am going to share my screen here and uh, take a look at the libraries. So we start off with Pond5. This is a library that is, uh, has accepted all of my tracks. Uh, it's uh, one of the uh, biggest uh, libraries uh, or stock music libraries. I have about uh, 258 music files in my portfolio here. Earnings for 2021 is 17.85 US dollars and uh, I have a payout here now it's 28 dollars why is it 28 dollars but well that's because I registered as a user for this library maybe 10 years ago <clears throat> and I actually have some images in addition to my music files and that's why I have a payout of 28 dollars for the music part it's 17.85 dollars in this year up until december 18 of course dreams time is another library this is uh, a library where i have about 250 files online as well and earnings for 2021 is uh, zero so but uh, dreams time is mainly a stock image library and it kind of feels like their music section is kind of an afterthought when you upload music. So you can see here that my earnings here are just from my pictures. I have uploaded it a few years ago. So no music earnings on <clears throat> on Dreams Time. 123RF, however, is one of my best performing library. I have about 250 files online on this library and my earnings for 2021 on 123RF is $57.68. This is one of the libraries where I have uh, a good amount of money when I sell a track. Uh, here is a, I have sold one track and it gave me eight dollars. Uh, I don't really think that's that much, but it's at least uh, something. So one, two, three RF, one of the better performers. Then we have Soundscape. This is a library that has rejected uh, a lot of my tracks, only 12 tracks online and uh, no earnings uh, on this uh, library. On the posit photos, I have about 250 files online here as well. Earnings for 2021 is $7.57 and that is including their subscription service, which is really... Uh, 
uh, low paying, uh, to be honest. And the only reason I still use this library is because the upload process is easy and takes uh, not that much time to upload tracks. But you can see here the music subscription here. I have a track here called Inspiring Cyber Stories and I got like zero, well, 0 0.57 dollars from it. You can see actually in my images here, here is an image I have sold, it gave me four dollars. So it's actually more than the music track. And on the subscription plan on the image here I got 30 cents, I think it is. And you can see here in August, I had a music subscription. They have downloaded uh, three uh, tracks and I got $0.47 on it. It's not that much <laughs> or it's it's really nothing. And then uh, on um, in June here, I sold a track called Dark Nightclub on demand. So this is not a subscription sale. There I got four fifty. So yeah. But that's the way it's going. Uh, if this library didn't have this easy upload process, I would not upload my music here. But uh, the file uploader here is really easy. You just drag the files here, you close it, it ups, uploads really fast, and you go to unfinished here, and you go to music, and you can kind of select all of your tracks here. You can add the metadata pretty fast. So deposit photos not earning that much but easy to upload then we have the music case the music case i have about 250 files online no sales then we have motion elements motion elements is if i'm not mistaken it's an asian library and they recently released a uh, subscription service for music and uh in November, I currently had $6.15 from uh, a few uh, tracks on motion elements. Then we have Music Grid. Music Grid, I only have a few files online. The upload process is very time consuming or the, actually the tagging and uh, keyboarding the tracks. It takes a lot of time. So I haven't focused much on this library. No sales on that. And then we have good old audio jungle. Building my portfolio on this place, it takes time to say the least. I can upload only two tracks each month and it's not guaranteed that the tracks get approved. Of course, they have to go through the approval process and I have actually had some months with uh, rejected tracks on Audio Jungle and some soft rejections that do take some time to adjust. So on Audio Jungle in 2021, I have had a total of 6.75 US dollars in sales with 12 tracks in the portfolio. And I am not a member of Envato Elements, but if I get... Uh, an invitation to it I'm going to accept and then we have my own website I also run my own website where I also have my portfolio online sales from my own website is twenty three point seventy three dollars and that is for selling just one track I don't have that much traffic on my own site and that's probably why I just have one sale but obviously having my own site means that I keep all of the earnings for myself. I don't have to give 70% of the sales to Pwn5 for example. I can keep 100% of the sales myself. And as you can see here, this site is running on my own server in the basement, running Unraid. I mean, this is something I have created myself. Even the server it's running on, it's running on WordPress and uh, I'm using a selfie backend. The day I got this sale, it was, I actually almost cried because it, uh, it means that someone wanted this track, someone wanted that track in their production and they bought it from my site, the site I have created myself. Well, it's not a lot of traffic on it, but it actually worked. And that was something that's really motivating to say the least. So that's the place, uh, that's the libraries I have my music on. So the total for 2021 is 119.73 US dollars. So in Norway where I live, 120 dollars, that's just one trip to the grocery store for a family. 
and maybe one fourth of a monthly car payment. So this stock music project, that's just a pocket change for now. Still, I have earned a lot more from stock music compared to Spotify, for example, and other streaming services. So for me, this is something I don't stress that much over. I have a good day job and I get paid okay, so it's not like I need the stock music part to succeed economically. I have also decided to take down my Patreon page because it's not like we need uh, the extra income and I don't feel it's right to ask for money if we have jobs and are uh, able to support ourselves currently. But if someday I go a 100% solo, meaning if I quit my job or if I get fired or something, I will probably restart the Patreon. So this kind of ties into the next part as well. So I have three, or that's two fingers. I mean, I have to blame this. Three main things I think you should focus on to get the uh, stock music licensing ball running. Number one is set aside time for stock music. So if this was my only job, I would just treat it like that. I would get up at eight or nine and I would start working on producing new music in the beginning of the day when you have the most energy and then later in the day focus on other tasks related to stock music such as uploading, tagging, organizing and uh, things like that. Number two is focus on creating sellable tracks. So what I mean by this is that you should make tracks that customers are willing to pay for. You can have the most perfectly produced and high quality track that is gr doing great on Spotify and other streaming services. But if it doesn't fit in a video or some other content, it won't probably sell that good. So make sure to check libraries and the genre you produce music in to see what is selling and try to analyze how the tracks are arranged, especially know kind of the short introductions and endings and try to make a track that mimics the arrangement in your own way, of course, so you don't just copy it, but you'd use it at a, as an inspiration or a, a, a template. Number three is finish your track and move on to the next one. I know it's super hard to make the decision that the track is finished because you can always do some tweaks. You can always change, do some changes to it to try to make it better. And at some point, however, you just have to let it go. You have to let the universe decide if the track was all right or not. Use reference tracks to help you out and don't sit on a track for months. Get it out there. And there's another reason why you shouldn't sit on the tracks too long also. Because you get better with each track you produce. So let's say if you produce one track each month, you produce 12 tracks a year. You just you just get 12 times better or not 12 times, but you just have 12 chances to get better. Let's say if you do, if you produce one track each week, that's 52 weeks. You have 52 chances to be better. What if you, let's say you, you look at a YouTube video in between and you kind of apply some tips and tricks you get in a YouTube video and you do that for for 52 weeks, you, you are going to get a lot better if you can create a track in one week and let it go and just start on the next one. Yeah, and do it like that. So try to get the track out there, try to make it, try to finish it and just forget it and move on to the next one. So what am I doing moving forward? Setting aside time for stock music is difficult. I have a day job that is taking up quite a lot of my time and when I'm done with the work, my energy levels are pretty low. I think you can relate to that you as well if you have a day job. So my priorities are my family, that's first priority, then it's my day job. And then it's everything else, including this, my YouTube channel and you watching. So you are sorry, but you are priority number three. I will keep producing music since synthesizers and gear is something I 
find for fun to work with. And if that then can create some tracks that sells in a music library, I think that's just perfect. But it's not, of course, going to be my main income source for the foreseeable future, because I can't really set aside that time needed to get this uh, ball rolling uh, fast enough. I think there's a lot of people out there that are interested in synthesizers and music gear that have a lot of music on their hard drive, but uh, no one has heard it. Maybe because you're afraid of getting rejected or maybe you're thinking it isn't good enough. Why don't you just upload the tracks to a library such as Pond5 and just see how it goes. It's uh, free to make an account, so you don't really have something to lose there. Do that instead of having the tracks laying around gathering dust on your hard drive. You may just have a gem lying around there somewhere that someone maybe wants to use in an ad, in a game, or some other type of media that you, they want to synchronize your music with. So to sum it up, set aside time for stock music. You have to dedicate time for it and you have to kind of block that out in your calendar if you have one. Number two is focus on creating sellable tracks. Take a look at the libraries, see what's selling and try to use it as a reference track for your own track. Don't copy it, but use it as an inspiration. And number three is let go of your tracks, get it uploaded and move on to the next one. You don't want to sit one month or two months to just tweak the kick drum so it's absolutely perfect. You don't want to sit three weeks to, to tweak that snare to make it absolutely perfect. But again, if you if this is your hobby, if you don't to rely on uh, stock music to, to earn an income or something, I'm not saying that's not all right but if you if you want to make music for stock libraries you have to have a kind of an output and uh, you can't use that much time to tweak things so uh, that's uh, just the way it is i hope this video was interesting and helpful take care out there and uh, let's hope 2022 is going to be a better year with everything that's happening or happening around this world I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say it because YouTube will probably do something with the video. But if you like this, you are welcome to click that like button. It actually helps. And if you think videos like this are interesting, there is also a subscribe button out somewhere there or somewhere. If not, take your favorite beverage and cheers. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.